Okay, here's another video on uh, finding uh, timing or setting timing. It's uh, basically the same process. Um, so right now you're going, whoa, there's no head on this thing. Well, some people need a visual. Uh, I, I know when I started learning, I need to know, I, I need to have some visual um, as far as uh, where um, the the valves were opening in, in, in respect to where the piston was at. So basically this is a stock setup. This is a stock engine. <clears throat> it's an old Greyhound. What you're going to see here is there's a sprocket. Uh, this just happened to be a 36 teeth and a 40 chain. Uh, you want a, a heavy chain if you're going to do it this way uh, because there's some clamping involved and you don't want a, a dinky chain that's going to uh, kink or, or, or bend. Um, you got your your uh, pointer just made out of a coat hanger. Uh, I try to use things that, that uh, the do-it-yourselfers are going to have in their shop. And uh, a degree wheel. Uh, this one happens to be uh, downloaded from machinerycleanery.com. I, I, I don't know what they are, but it was free. And it's uh, glued to uh, a hard uh, cardboard, uh, looks like a, an old timing belt uh, box. Uh, so basically, um, I don't know where in the cycle this uh, this engine is at. Um, I see the pistons uh, close to top dead center, or close to the top. I don't know if it's top dead center, but we're going to find out. So I'm going to put the uh, degree wheel on, and since the piston is right at the top, we're going to go ahead and set it at zero. It's going to change, I'm sure of that. <coughs> You want your pointer to point to the center of the crankshaft. You don't want it angling this way or angling down this way. Uh, so you want to be as accurate as possible. Get a little space there so it doesn't rub. So we're we're right about at zero there. It uh, accuracy isn't is, isn't important of uh, lining up right at zero at this point. Uh, we don't know where the where we are in the stroke. So <coughs> and I apologize. I'm getting over a cold but I promised somebody I'd get this video out um, so basically uh, we are on uh, one of my old run-in stands uh, set at 15 degrees to mimic uh, it being on on the, the cart itself on a 15 degree uh, motor mount and the chain goes down to a electric engine again this is one of my run-in benches <coughs> and we use it just basically um, to uh, have the engine go through a cycle without it, without it running. Uh, it's better to have it at a lower speed and it, rather than you know going two, three thousand RPM and find out something uh, something's not right and be catastrophic. So this way, at least we have a chance uh, that if something's wrong, you know, 500 uh, RPM is is going to be uh, a little easier on the parts than 3,000. So uh, we got our timing wheel set at zero, pointers pointing straight. We're going to go ahead and rotate this engine, watching the push rods <coughs> to see where we're at. You want to push down on the push rods a little bit because sometimes those lifters stick. Uh, right now the exhaust is coming up, which means the exhaust is opening because when the push rod pushes up, it's going to push the uh, front of the rocker down, which is on the, the valve, and it's going to open the valve. So, and now it's going down, so the valve is closing, and the piston, it was right at top dead center, so it just expelled all the exhaust gases, and now it's going down, it's sucking air in, so this, this would be the intake stroke, <clears throat> so the intake uh, valve is opening, and now the valve is, the, the push rod's going back down, which means it's closing the valve, and the piston's coming up for its compression stroke, so you got all that air fuel kind of in that cylinder there and the pistons coming up and compressing it so we're going to come up and we're going to eye it uh, sometimes you can feel as you're rotating the engine <clears throat> the, the resistance kind of goes away and that's the point where it's really close to top dead center you're not going to get really accurate by feel <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but what we're trying to do is just get a basic idea kind of set our uh, degree wheel in the general vicinity of zero when it reaches top dead center and right there and we are pretty much right at zero so at this point we are right where we want to be <coughs> now if we back it up 
Now, if that if that is if this was true, top dead center, and this was right at zero, we want to be firing at about 36 degrees. So we're going to back it up, and right about there, that's 36 degrees, and you see where the piston is. In this engine, it's about three eighths of an inch down from the top of the of the uh, cylinder. <coughs> <coughs> But it, it can vary a little bit because some some blocks of have, have longer cylinders than others. Some are shorter. Uh, rod sizes are different. Strokes are different. So um, it's about three eighths of an inch on this one at 36 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to back it back down. So we're turning it clockwise because this is the ass end of it. It's the PTO side. <coughs> the other side is where the flywheel is. Flywheel turns clockwise. So we're just going to back it down a little bit. We're going to put the head on because we are right in the ballpark of where we need to be. So now we're going to put the head on, we're going to put the piston stop in, and we're actually going to find the true top dead center. Okay, so now I have the head on. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate the engine around uh, just like we did before, and we're going to watch the valves open and close. <coughs> and... Uh, find out where we are and on the cycle um, I, I, I don't remember exactly but we're gonna rotate it counterclockwise because that's this is the direction the this side of the engine rotates if you're looking the other side it would be rotating clockwise so we rotate it and watching the uh, the rockers so we're gonna just go through it uh, and here the exhaust is opening which means the valve is opening exhaust gases are coming out now it's closing, and now the intake is opening, which means the air fuel is being sucked into the, to the chamber, into the cylinder. And now the intake is closed, which means the piston is now gonna start its way up to compress the air fuel mixture. I use a, you can use a screwdriver. This is a, this happens to be a push rod. I like to round it in on top of the piston rather than a sharp edge, like a screwdriver, so. And you can watch the piston. Or you can watch the, the push rod go up, which is on top of the piston, and just get a rough idea of when it stops moving up. That's about top dead center. And we had set this earlier, so it's going to be pretty close to zero, and here we are about two degrees or so. That's, that's fine. And then we're going to back it back down. I turned it back down about 50, uh, 50 degrees just to clear the, the piston stop when I install it so I'm not screw it into the top of the piston. And you can make your piston stops out of um, old uh, spark plugs. Uh, I, I found that was way too much work so I went to the store and found something that had the same thread pitches as, as a spark plug uh, and just put a piece of all thread through it with a nut and bolt on either side. Works really well. So now <coughs> Excuse me, and then we're going to rotate the engine back towards zero and see where it stops Right here. It stops at 17 degrees And then we're going to rotate the engine back the other side and Again, it stops and it's 17 degrees now suppose let's just Tweak it a little bit. So now it's not at seven. It's now it's at 14 degrees. So we, we we'll start again so we got the we put the piston stop in and now we're rotating it back towards zero and it's stopping at about 19 and a half 19 three quarters so we're right here keep an eye on it this uh, degree wheel is a little screwy it's got two zeros and two nineties we're talking about this zero right here so right there you can put a little mark on it if you wanted uh, to remember what zero it was. So we're about almost 20. I'm going to rotate it back. And here we are at about 14. So the difference between 14 to 20 is 6. Divide that by 2, you get 3. So add 3 degrees. 1, 2, 3. So now we are at uh, 17 degrees. Now we want to make sure that it's 17 degrees the other side so we rotate it back <clears throat> and there we are it's about 16 and a half so we're just going to tweak it just a 
just a little bit. So now it's just below, just below 17. Now, run it back the other way. And right there, we are just below 17. So, I'm gonna take the pressure off the piston stop. Take the piston stop out. And once the piston stops out, we rotate it to zero. That piston will be at absolute top dead center. Right there. That piston is as high as it's going to get. <clears throat> but we want 36, well, in our shop we do 36 degrees generally uh, on a stalker. So if you're looking at it, uh, the, the, the flywheel turns uh, clockwise on this side, but this side is gonna turn counterclockwise. So we wanna turn this top dead center Oops. So you want to set it at 36 degrees before top dead center. So the, the flywheel turns clockwise. We're going to turn it counterclockwise. So this way, this side is going to turn actually clockwise. So we're going to turn it back to 36 degrees. And that is where we want this thing set when we install the flywheel. Now, um, I have two different flywheels here. Here's one. Let me back out a little bit. Oops, wrong way. That's as far as it goes. This is an arc flywheel. This is uh, something a lot of people have seen. Uh, on the the trigger point on the arc is right at the seam right here. You get two seams. You got one here and one here. Um, the front or the top leg uh, of the ignition coil will rest right on there, and that is when uh, this will trigger the coil to send a spark. Uh, we don't use arc too much anymore uh, we use ambush racing it is a sweet product um, I uh, they, they they when they originally came out they didn't have any any place where it identified where the trigger point was these are one of the original designs <laughs> but I'm sure when Jeremy sees it he'll uh, I'll have a few of them uh, by next week uh, that the new ones do have uh, the trigger point on it and the magnets right here the trigger point on this would be roughly right about there and if you don't know where the trigger point is the only way to find out is uh, to roughly uh, guess where to put the uh, flywheel on spin it over in this case we would just simply hook up the electric motor turn it on and take a uh, a uh, um, the gun and, and and fire at it and see and, 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 yeah timing light that's what I'm trying to say my mind is all all clogged up so you take the timing light <clears throat> and find out where it is exactly triggering but it would be roughly it would be roughly there's the magnet it'd be roughly right about here <clears throat> so we're gonna go to the other side of the engine and because I don't have one that, that shows a trigger point we're gonna we're going to use the the arc sorry jeremy um uh to to finish up setting the time um so let me switch the camera around and get the other side all right so we meet again all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of lapping compound you don't want a whole heck of a lot i actually use a mix between lapping and uh polish uh it just gives a little bit more of a lubrication in there <clears throat> Take your flywheel, you want to put a little bit in your flywheel. You don't need a whole half a lot. Put your flywheel on there and just simply. It's okay if, if the crank moves because we already know, uh, we already have it set where top dead center is, right? You don't need too much. Basically what you're doing is just uh, you're mating the two surfaces together so you get really good contact because there's uh, nothing's going to ruin a crank faster than uh, than a flywheel spinning because it, uh, it will weld itself it will weld itself to the uh, the crank in the worst position possible and you'll never get it off. So you got that lapped on there I'm going to clean it off really well nice clean rag I'm going to 
to make sure you get all that laughing compound off there. You can see that it's shine, it cleaned it up pretty well. Clean it inside the flywheel. Get as much out as you can. You might have to do this process two or three times. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go through the steps here. Uh, no key. Get rid of your freaking key. <clears throat> so, now I have to go on the other side again. Get a line back to 36. And you want 36. Right there. So that's 36 there. And we're going to put this on here. And remember the the uh, the trigger point is this uh, seam right here on the arc and you want to line it up with the leg you just want to press it on there get your cup your nut and we're not gonna we're not gonna tighten this up um, but we're gonna, I'm going to show you all the steps up to uh, torquing it down. So there we go. That's on there. Double check the other side again. Make sure it's 36. And just a hair off. 36. Right there. Double check this again. It's moved a little bit. Right there, tighten it down. Now, uh, we do not use um, uh, a flywheel wrench. We're gonna use something different. So we're gonna go back to the other side and I'm gonna show you that. So, let me take, what's nice about a 40 chain is you can take an old uh, push rod, stick it in there, You want to make sure that your timing doesn't move. Take some uh, some pliers. And oh, not adjusted right. And clamp it. If it moved at all, redo it. Did you hear that? That was my knuckles. All right, so there we go. And now you torque it and it won't move. And whatever you set it at here, it will stay that way when you torque it. So there you go. Have a wonderful day.